Hello besties and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Saskia and I was diagnosed with autism very recently, as in two days ago. I'm very happy about it, um, but I thought while the assessment is still fresh in my mind, I will do a video on the assessment because obviously when you're autistic you quite like to be prepared for things and there's no videos on the assessment that I had so I could not prepare. It made me a little bit nervous. Yeah, so do, the plan is to do two videos. The plan is to do one on my assessment, what that is like, and then the second one is to do a video on like the signs of autism in me, <laughs> my autism. because. There are so many girls out there and when you have the kind of the holy trinity of like an anxiety disorder, either anxiety, OCD or social anxiety, depression and some kind of eating disorder, it could very well be autism. Now I'm going to go through my autism assessment. So I'm going to split it into the timeline, the forms that I had to fill in, the assessment itself. So we're going to kind of have before the assessment, during the assessment, after the assessment. Here is my timeline. My timeline is quite short because I was on a waiting list. Long story short, autism was brought up to me in 2017. I said, no way, Jose. I then brought it up with my GP in 2020, was referred to the autism assessment pathway. Literally haven't, still haven't heard from them now. It's been three years. Like not even a hey, you're on the waiting list. So in late August of 2022, I called the GP and I was like, I've heard about this whole right to choose thing. Oh my God, big sleigh. So in late August, I called the GP and I asked to be referred. In November, the 4th of November, I officially got an account on the Psychiatry UK website. So I was assessed through Psychiatry UK, so it was all online. Then I got sent like the pre-assessment forms to fill in. On the 18th of January, they called me with an appointment and then they never spoke to me again. So they called me with an appointment and then I called them back and they were like, yeah, we'll let you know when we have appointments available. Like, for some reason I couldn't just book one in advance. It had to be a, we'll call you that there's one tomorrow. I don't know if that's normal. So then on the 7th of March, two months later, I called them up. Well, I sent them a message on like the portal and I was like, can I get an assessment? Because no one's called me. Can I not just book one in advance? Funnily enough, you can book one in advance. So. If they call you saying, oh, we've got one available right now, but like, we don't know when the next one's available. Liars, ask them for the next available appointment. You don't care which psychiatrist it's with. You want the next available appointment, not a, I'll call you when there's one available, because there's not one available. They didn't call me in those two months, so there was no available appointments. So, 7th of March, I got given the appointment for April. And then on the 7th of April, I had my assessment. My assessment was meant to be on the 6th of April. The psychiatrist canceled but they managed to reschedule me for the next day. So the reschedule wasn't kind of too long of like a waiting. The biggest wait was I think they forgot about me. So if it's been a while, if it's been a month, two months, six weeks, and you've not heard from them at all, send a message on the portal, call them up. Like, and this has got, this has got to be after you've sent your forms in. It can't be before, it has to be after when you're waiting for an appointment. Send them a message and just say, can I book the next available appointment? I think you've forgotten about me because I said, I think you've forgotten about me and it worked. With the forms that I was sent on the 4th of November, I was asked to do, I think it was about three things. I was asked to do the AQ50. I was asked to do the AQ50 and screenshot my answers as well as the scoring page. So screenshot your answers, screenshot the scoring page. Then I was given a, I was given a form let me find the form. Um, I was going to have a very long, like I think it was about 20, 26 pages of questions. I'm going to go through some of the questions. I will put a blank one on the screen to show you roughly what it looks like because I didn't really know what I was going to get asked. Like I knew kind of, I know what the signs of autism are, so I know what they were going to roughly ask me about, but you get asked at the beginning like, what do you want to achieve from the meeting? I literally said, a diagnosis for autism. Um, it wasn't a, I want to know what's going on. It was a, I know I'm autistic, but can someone validate me? You then get asked like, whose idea was it to do the assessment? 
tell us about your family, do you get on with your family? You then have a personal history section, which is like a, when you were literally an infant, what were you like as a baby? Were you clumsy? When could you do the following things? Did you like cuddles? What kind of playing did you do? School years, you then just talk about your school. It was just, do you have any issues at school? Did you receive additional support? Did you enjoy school? No, I hated it. Um, what subjects did you enjoy? Do you still have friends from school? Further education, did you attend? Employment history, have you had any difficulties at work? Social communication is probably the biggest section. This is the one I need to help with. So you get sent the form and you're asked for you and an informant to fill it in. I think there are rules the informant has to have known you for at least two years. So like a mum, a sister, a friend that's known you. I think it's okay if you don't have an informant, but I'm not entirely sure. And you can also just pick one informant. Like you might have a mum and a dad and a sister. If you think your sister's gonna know the best answers and knows you well enough, get the sister to do it. Don't get the dad to do it who's not gonna be able to answer half the questions. So social communication is a lot about like misinterpretation, how do you handle social situations, non-verbal communications, humour, empathy, initiating um, conversations. I had to ask for a lot of help with this section in the sense that I don't know if I can do some of these things, like, like humour, banter, sarcasm, metaphors, euphemism. I was like, I feel like I understand them. But then speaking to other people, they're like, no, you don't. So these kinds of things, as much as it's your form, you can ask people like, and you can literally just write a statement that says, I asked my friend because I don't know what I do know. That kind of thing. Then there is a routines, repetitive interest and sensitivity section. How do you spend your time at home? Um, what routines do you have? What interests do you have? Then there was like the sensory difficulty section as like, Oh, taste, smell, touch, texture, pressure, temperature. What sensitivities do you have? A section on daily living activities. Can you do the following? Yes, yes with support, no. And then your personal circumstances, which is like, oh, are you in a relationship? Are you working? Do you have any friends? Are you in any clubs? Your overall health and well-being. Do you have any health conditions? Do you currently have any treatment? Do you take any drugs? You also get asked what are your strengths and your aspirations I didn't really understand those questions, so I didn't really do them. I literally put, I'm quite intelligent, that's all. <laughs> Aspirations, I don't think I put anything in that box. Um, then there's a big question, in which way do you think your difficulties have impacted your life? Now, you probably kind of answered that in all the other things, but yeah. There's also a, is there anything else that would be helpful for us to know? The answer is always yes. Um, I also did the Rads R Autism, the Cat Q, um, I did the AQ50 over a period of time. I had someone else answer the AQ50 for me. Like anything that you might find relevant, any extra difficulties to mention, I got a copy of the DSM criteria for each bullet point section I went through. Here's a struggle I have, here's a struggle I have, here's a struggle I have. Did I need to give all of that? No. I was complimented on how much I had said that. So, I don't know. When you've been waiting so long for an assessment, you just want to make sure you get it. Like, you want to make sure you get the diagnosis. So I said every single thing I could think of. Like, I, I think you get six weeks to a, a month to six weeks to fill in this form. Take your time. I did all of it in one session, came back to it. Came back to it again. Read my informant's form came back to my own one. Did extra assessments and screenings, came back to my own one. Take your time, put literally anything that could even be slightly relevant, because chances are, it will be relevant. And even if it's not, the fact that you've said so much shows that you actually want this assessment. Um, you then do also get asked to send school reports and details of previous psychiatric psychological assessments. So I sent in I had a, oh my god, what's it called, care around the family form from secondary school. I only had about a page of that, but one of the sentences was like, Saskia is very opinionated, very rigid in her views. I was like, oh my god, that sounds perfect. I was also under CAMS for a very long time, so I sent most of my forms from that. 
I have also previously had, um, I've previously been, been screened for autism where they did the, it was like the AQ but for kids or something. We did that so we had those scores. If you have a previous like assessment score, they will ask you about it though. They will go, why is there a difference now? I literally just didn't understand the questions and I didn't want to be autistic, but now I'm like, no babe, you're literally autistic. Like, you will have to explain any differences, but basically if you have any like medical records, any GP notes, any school notes of like, that you, like you had significant illnesses and you weren't in school, or you had special considerations for exams, I, again, sent in too much. I did the same as when I applied for disabled students allowance, which is what they asked for is just a list of your diagnoses. I was like, I don't actually have a list of my diagnoses because funnily enough, I was under CAMS, babe. You don't get diagnosed. I literally sent in about 100 pages of documents because I was like, again, look at all the mental health struggles I've had because of my autism. Look at all the evidence for autism that comes throughout this. Like, if you read my medical records, it is an absolute shock that no one picked up autism before because it's pretty evident. Um, the way that they write things as well is very autistic coded, but they were just like, it's not autism. Like, here's the annoying thing. I was under a specialist mental health service for years and they didn't pick up autism. Or if they did, I got told like a, oh, but remember that it's a developmental disorder. So you have to have had developmental delays. I was like, actually, here's all this research that says that a lot of girls learn how to walk and stuff and are developmentally like advanced. And they're like, hee 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 hee. We don't fucking care. So, CAMS could have assessed and diagnosed me significantly faster. They didn't. <sighs> Just a little, a little side rant. And you send a little forms, you send in your informant form, la da da. Then, in the assessment itself, you get sent a link to the assessment with a pin. It's kind of like Zoom. You have to do a test before the assessment on the website. It literally just tests your audio, it doesn't test your camera, and it just lets you know, like, you can do the assessment, I guess. Then when you join the assessment, you put in the pin, like with Zoom, you put your pin in, and then it opens up to a screen with you on the left, assessor on the right. Your assessor's probably not there. It opens up 15 minutes before. It opens up with your camera on. You will have your camera on for the assessment. And you then just kind of wait. It's, it's pretty much Zoom in that you've got like a leave button. It's kind of like Blackboard as well. You just, you don't need to click any buttons. You literally just get in and then you kind of sit there. When you get in, you need photo ID. So if you have a driver's license, a passport, that's kind of all I can think of. You have to show that at the beginning. So keep that sat next to you because I wrote down I needed that forgot it, and then as soon as she was like, can I see some ID? I was like, fuck, you can, but it'll take me a few seconds to get it. So have your ID. It will also record the assessment. So along the top of the screen, it says, this assessment is being recorded, and in your portal, on your appointment history, when the assessment is finished, all of the recording will be there. However, I can't access my recording when I click on it, it downloads as a HTML that can't be opened. So it might be worth recording yourself. I had my iPad sat kind of on top of the side, like my laptop was here, I had it sat on top of the side of my laptop, voice recordings on. However, once I saw that it was being recorded, I turned off my voice recording, which I shouldn't have done because, not that there was any problems with my assessment, but I can't access the recording, which means that if there was problems, I can't go back and prove it. So have your own method of recording, whether it's a camera, an audio recorder, an iPad, a phone, something to just verify what happens. The assessment was about 30 to 50 minutes. I think they said if it was gonna be a really straightforward case, it would be about 30 minutes. Any longer, I think they said we had up to an hour and a half. Mine, I think was about 50 minutes. Um, didn't take that long and they asked you for your photo id then they asked you a lot of kind of odd questions like do you do drugs do you drink do you have any health problems um it's kind of similar to like that last section of the informant forms i'm not sure why they asked but you just answer them <laughs> and then you i got asked a lot of times even though i'd already said it in my form how do you spend your time alone? I think it was the first question I was asked and then also a middle way through. 
I'm not sure what the expected response is. I don't know what the neurotypical and the neurodivergent responses are for a lot of these questions, but they will ask you a lot how you spend your time alone. Um, then I was asked, oh god, I was also asked, when are you at your happiest? I don't, I don't know. I really struggled. I took a solid five minutes of just silence and I was like, when am I at my happiest? I haven't got a clue. I was like, I'm really sorry, but I don't, I don't, I can't answer the question. I don't, I don't know when I'm at my happiest. I couldn't tell you. I was also asked, how do social interactions make you feel? And I really got this question wrong. Um, because I think I said like, oh, I really don't like them. And she was like, yeah, but how do they make you feel? And I was like, feel. I needed prompting. She then gave me like, oh, do they make you feel like this? And I was like, yeah, they do. Um, then kind of muddled in between those questions, we essentially went through the form. Um, she kind of picked out specific questions. She kind of mentioned things, but didn't necessarily ask me. So she was like, oh, I've seen your special interests here. Let's move on. I think it was more so my thing is, I think by the time they come to the assessment, they know you're autistic. They know it's a yes or a no. It's just a confirmation. Because I was not asked anything that was new and was not found in my forms. I think it was just going to be a case of how I articulated it, how I responded to the questions, rather than a, can I have new information because I'm not sure if you're autistic or not. So we kind of went through the form. We looked at some specifics. I think I was asked about like sensory difficulties, I was asked about school, um, I was asked like what degree I'm doing, what friends I have. They will also ask you about any disparities between you and your informant's form. So whether that be like, oh, mum says you really enjoyed school, but you said you didn't. You then just get to explain them and they do believe you over the parent because funnily enough, they fucking should. So like, in the form where it was like, oh, you can do this on your own, you can't do this on your own. Um, my informant had said I couldn't do a lot of things, which fair enough, it does, like I do need help to do them. Or I did need help to do them, but I don't live at home anymore, so it's not as known. So I was like, oh yes, that would have been the case at this time period, but it's no longer the case. Let me explain the difficulties. I was then also asked to explain um, Oh, yeah, so I have my previous autism, like, screening. I was asked to explain why the scores had changed. Again, they were happy to believe me and believe my newest score because it makes sense. Oh, when you've been putting your, like, diagnoses, if you have any mental health diagnoses, I was asked if I agree with them. I was asked, do you believe that these are true? Do you believe they are explained by autism? I think that's because, obviously, a lot of diagnoses, like, BPD, is or like misdiagnosed as autism is misdiagnosed as like BPD a lot of the times and like I don't think I have X and Y because autism covers it however Z is not covered by autism so I still have Z like you were asked to articulate whether you still think you have X Y and Z the others the psychiatrist isn't going to remove them from your record but it's just a what do you think I yeah we then there was we then pretty much just finished and it was a, I was asked, I think it was about 10 statement questions. And it was just a say yes or say no to these. Social interactions make me feel uncomfortable and I dislike them. I have sensitivities to temperature, touch, to texture, smell, pressure. Those kinds of things. I answered yes to all of them. And I was like, oh my God, that's so autistic of me. Um, but I think by that point they'd made their decision. Um, I then answered those questions and she was like, babe, yeah, I'm satisfied you meet you meet the diagnostic criteria. I was like, slay, we all knew. <laughs> then, um, like, my opinion of that actually though, I thought it would be harder. Like I know, I know it's not an assessment, but I thought it'd be like an assessment. Like I don't know if it's just because mine was online, but like I, or like if it's because it's through a private place and they don't want to like spend that much money on stuff. But, like I wasn't asked, you know, people get asked, like, to mind brushing their teeth. No. Or, like, look at this picture book. Make a story. Um, make a story out of three items that you've got. Like, I wasn't asked any of those kind of things. I wasn't asked anything that wasn't on my form. I wasn't asked to do any scales. Like, they didn't ask me the AQ50 questions. And then I would respond to them. It was just much more of a conversation. 
Um, it was much more just pretty much of a therapy session of like a, oh yeah, why do you find this difficult? Oh, that's, that's interesting. Like, rather than a, oh, please can you answer this question? How do you feel about this? Oh, make a story about these, these flying fucking frogs. <laughs> like, I'm glad I didn't have to do those because again, I don't know what the right response is. Like, I don't wanna make a story about flying frogs. How do you mind brushing your teeth? Is it different because I have an electric toothbrush? At what point do I begin the miming? Do I need to put toothpaste on? I don't understand those kinds of things. Um, I'm very glad I didn't have any of those questions. I assume it's just because it's kind of private. So if you're not through Psychiatry UK, I think your assessment will be completely different to this. So then after she kind of said, uh, yes, babe, it's autism. She then said that she would refer me for a psychosocial needs assessment. I think, I think it was that. Something about the GP assessing me. I was like, I don't really know what's going on. And also an occupational therapy assessment. I don't remember why the occupational therapy assessment came up, but I guess I will get referred to that. After the assessment is finished, you can then just leave. She then just says, okay, bye. And you just, you hang up and you leave. Um, after the assessment, you get two letters straight away on your portal. You get sent a letter for reasonable adjustments, which also confirms your diagnosis. It says, I have assessed blank with, uh, you know, according to DSM-5, they meet the criteria for autism. La 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 la. Oh, universities have a legal requirement, Southampton, <laughs> to do certain things. Um, you can then just send that to your uni. I'm not sending mine because I don't care anymore. It's reached the, it's pretty much the end of term. I've got like, what, four weeks left and my university hates me. So yeah, um, I think it's just two pages of like, here are some recommended adjustments, but it also confirms your diagnosis. So if you don't care about the adjustments, but you just need your university to like be aware, it confirms it. I then got sent an advice to the patient document, which was just like a, oh, get a good support system, disclose your diagnosis if you want to, that kind of thing. I was like, I don't really care. Um, I wasn't really gonna read that or look at that. Like, I don't think I needed the advice because I was, I know I'm autistic and I knew I was autistic before the assessment. It wasn't like I was going into the assessment for a, oh, I'm, I'm borderline, I could be. Oh, I was also at the end of the assessment asked, she said she was gonna send me a screening questionnaire for ADHD. She was like, it doesn't sound like you've got it, but we'll send it anyway. I was like, nah, babe, I've already done ADHD screenings. I don't have ADHD. So I don't know if it would be the same as in an ADHD assessment, would they send you an autism screening? But like, I think it's just because a lot of people can have both or can be misdiagnosed with one. Um, so you could also like in your pre-screening forms, do an ADHD assessment and send it in and be like, it's not ADHD either, babe. So then it should now be in four to six weeks after the appointment, I would get a letter summarizing the assessment. It won't say everything, but it will pretty much just say, oh, we spoke through this, your difficulties are blank, you have this diagnosis, and that goes to you and your GP. So your GP will get a letter so that they can then action it and do, I don't know, the occupational therapy assessment, psychosocial needs assessment, but just be aware of it. So it will now be on your medical records. I, I'm i really happy with how my assessment went. I'm really happy with the process. I think it could have been a bit faster in the sense if they hadn't forgotten about me. But considering I'm currently, I've been on a waiting list for three years. This got done in about six months. Like, and like when I called the GP and said, babe, I think I'm autistic. She didn't need much evidence. I was like, oh, well, I can give you hundreds of pages of documents. And she was like, no, 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 that's fine. Just give me like a couple of reasons. I was like, well, here are some difficulties. They were more than happy to put in the referral. It took them a little while because they were a bit confused about the whole right to choose thing. Um, and they weren't sure how to actually send the referral. But like, so yeah, I do highly recommend getting an assessment. You don't need the assessment to know you're autistic. I wanted the assessment for the validation and honestly just the piece of paper that says Saskia is autistic because now I can use that piece of paper rather than hundreds because I have like hundreds of pages of medical documents not a single one of them explicitly says a diagnosis so I like for applied for DSA I had to send in hundreds of pages when I could have just sent in a I have autism but I couldn't because I knew I had autism everyone else knew I had autism but the medical system didn't know I had autism I'm not too sure how psychiatry UK works if you're like under 16 
However, if you're 16 or over, they don't have to contact your parents. So if your parents are like, no, we don't want you assessed, they literally don't have to know. You go to the GP, the referral is done silently through the GP, they won't tell anyone. No letters get sent to your family. Your informant form can be done by your friends. Your assessment is done online. You can do it, you know, at a friend's house. Like, you can do all of this in secret if you have to. If your family doesn't agree that you're autistic, it's fine. But also, I think even if you just think that there's like a chance that you're autistic, do a couple of screening things. I'll link a couple of screening ones down below. There's a good website. I don't remember what it's called, but it's blue. It's where I did the AQ, the RADS R, all of that kind of thing. I also asked my neurotypical friend to do them. It really just gives you a shocker of how autistic you are because my neurotypical, I think my neurotypical friend, Jade, I think she scored about seven on the RADS R in total. I scored 203 or something. Seven was lower than my lowest section in the RADS R. So it was interesting to see, but it will also give you a sign of maybe like a, your borderline autism, like you, you just quite, it could be that, it could be something else, or like a, you, you're so far in, there's not really anything else it could be. And like, it might be worth doing before you send in your assessment, just looking if there's anything else it could be. So I had kind of looked at like obsessive compulsive personality disorder, and I was like, well, that could be it, but it doesn't explain like sensory difficulties. And it's worth almost doing your own psychiatry to just figure out which ones could I have, which ones do I have? Like, do you have autism or is it CPTSD? Do you have BPD or is it autism? Like, have a research about different conditions, do different assessment scores, different screenings, do screenings over different periods of time. Like, if you ask for the assessment, and then it takes them six weeks to send, like for your referral to go through. Do the AQ every seven days, just to check. Like, cause then you can send up, my AQ literally does not change. Um, I think I also had it, my AQ does change. It goes from between 41 to 45, depending on how I read the question that day, depending on how I'm thinking. So like, it's also, it's okay if your scores change. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth doing those kind of self-assessment scales and also you can just attach so much shit to that informant document like if you've written a whole personal essay attach it if you've got like a letter from your from a teacher that says i think i think this person's autistic attach it like they will read it all and it will also help i think be as detailed as possible in your informant form because then it i think it made my assessment easier there was a lot less that i had to explain because I had been so detailed. Oh, here's a disclaimer thing though. This always happens to me because I'm a psychology student. Bitches assume I am self-diagnosing with everything because I've read the DSM. I've not read the DSM. Don't disclose that you're a psychology student. Um, like it didn't come off negatively for me this time, but she was like, oh, so you've learned all about autism. I was like, no, I actually haven't. And she said, oh, I can see you've included the DSM because you've learned about it. I was like, no, no, my, my university hasn't taught me any of this. I've been doing this of my own accord because I'm autistic, not because I'm a psychology student who's malingering. Like, being a psychology student always comes off negatively for me in these kinds of assessments because they're just like, oh, but you're just, just cheating. Like, one of my teachers in sick form, first of all, she was an angel until she said this. She was like, oh, I'm just a bit worried about when Saskia goes to university that she might learn about all these disorders and think she has them. What if I do? <laughs> like, first of all, you really don't learn about disorders. We've learned about like schizophrenia. I don't have that one. We've not learned about any of the disorders that I got, really. And like, I knew I had them before we did the lecture. Like, I was already aware of this. So, I don't know, maybe don't disclose you're a psychology student or do disclose it and be like, okay, but like, I promise I'm not a malingerer. Please stop. Because we just think you malinger as soon as you do a psychology degree. No, but you didn't know what other degree to do. If I'd done a biology degree where they've been like, oh, but you just think you have cancer because like you've learned about the cells. No, they wouldn't have done that. This is discrimination against psychology students. I think that was my last <laughs> side rant, side quest to go on. Um, if anyone has any questions about any part of the assessment, I will answer them because I was really nervous going into it and not knowing that much. If you have a Psychiatry UK assessment coming up, Leave me a comment with a question or DM me on Instagram. I don't know which one I'll see sooner. But like, 
I will step by step take you through it. I will voice note you through it if you need because I didn't fucking know what to expect and it made me really nervous. Um, especially considering they cancelled my appointment the day before. I was like, now what? Um, I was a little bit nervous. So, that is everything. Um, I'm then going to film at some point. I was going to film it straight after, but I'm kind of fucking tired. Um, I'm going to film a video of my signs of autism, how I knew I was autistic. Um, that'll probably be the next video that you see after this. If you have any questions about autism assessments, right to choose Psychiatry UK, go ahead. I will leave a link to a lot of scales and useful stuff down below, including the Psychiatry UK right to choose thing, because I know I posted on my Instagram story, I was like, bestie's been diagnosed. So many DMs about how the fuck do you do this? Like, don't worry, I got you. <laughs>